Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Goldfinger. Since Skyfall is Daniel Craig's third Bond movie, I thought I would review the other three actors who have done a third Bond movie, and I'm starting it off with the first James Bond, which is Sean Connery, and his third James Bond movie, which is Goldfinger. James Bond trying to defeat the evil Goldfinger, who is trying to steal the U.S.'s supply of gold. He wants to become the most powerful man in the world, and James Bond has to stop him. Now, Goldfinger is considered the quintessential James Bond movie, and I agree. It's the third Bond film ever made. Dr. No and From Russia With Love are great movies, and I think the first three James Bond movies are among the best three James Bond movies. I've probably said From Russia With Love is the best one, and I've probably said Dr. No is the best one. But Goldfinger, I think, is the best example of what a James Bond movie is. So when people say Goldfinger is the best James Bond movie, I, I kind of agree just because it's a good example. Well, you know, when you're gonna pick something that's the best, it should really just be a good example of what that is. So if someone's like, oh, if this is the best, I'm gonna see this and this will be the example of the best that this can be. What Goldfinger is, is it sets the format that the Roger Moore and Pierce Brosnan and so many um, Bond films would take on. Goldfinger is formatted in which the movie opens with an action sequence that has very little to do with the plot that's going on with the rest of the Bond movie, um, but is really cool and sets up the movie well. And then the Q sequence where he hangs out with Q and they talk and then he flirts with Monty Penny. There's a girl who dies at the beginning who, of course, the main villain Goldfinger kills. He covers her in gold. One of the more famous images from Goldfinger is this naked woman painted in gold and he kills her by uh, her skin can't breathe, so she dies of skin strangulation or something. Throughout many James Bond movies, there's a girl who's involved with the villain, and then the villain kills her, and James Bond seeks revenge because he really likes her because he had sex with her. The trap that James Bond can obviously get out of. And I think some of these ideas that throughout the series were in Dr. No and From Russia With Love. But I think the fact that Goldfinger's format was so perfect, and the fact that every Bond film after this basically used that format until Casino Royale happened. But I mean, you look at most of the Pierce Brosnan films did it, uh, Roger Moore's films pretty much all had this format. Several of Sean Connery's movies after this had this format. It's a format that really worked and is pretty much the format if you're thinking of how a Bond movie works and how it flows, you'd think of Goldfinger. Also, I think Goldfinger is a really great, exciting, fun movie. It is a little more tongue-in-cheek than the two were before it. Dr. No and From Rush With Love are a little bit more modest than Goldfinger. I mean, as modest as a James Bond movie can be. At this point, James Bond had been successful, but Goldfinger really put it over the edge where there were lines around the block. It was a huge success. And the fact that I think at this point, they had money. From Rush With Love and Dr. No had been hits, so they had more money to spend, and you could have these lavish, incredible sequences and shots and villains and girls covered in gold. And also you kind of knew what to expect from Bond at this point. I love Oddjob. The villain has this henchman, this cool henchman with kind of a gimmick behind him. Jaws, later in the Roger Moore films, is obviously from the format of Goldfinger. I think probably this film influenced more crappy James Bond movies than good James Bond movies if you really think about it. Whereas when you look at Casino Royale, which owes a lot more to Dr. No and From Rush With Love, I think that's a format I'm more interested in. But I think Goldfinger, you have to give it up to Goldfinger just because of everything that it influenced and that it's a great movie and you have pussy galore. Guy Hamilton, who directed this, this is his first of four James Bond movies. Terrence Young did the first two. He did this film and Diamonds Are Forever with Connery and then he did Live and Let Die and The Man with the Golden Gun for Roger Moore. A lot of the Bond directors did more than one. Very few did just one film. Everyone knows the scene where the laser's, you know, going to cut James Bond in half. And James Bond, like, you want me to talk? And he goes, no, Mr. Bond, I want you to die. It's almost a cliche. I mean, I think Austin Powers, and I remember The Simpsons did something with it. If you look at anyone else who's played Bond, they always, to me, never feel as comfortable and as relaxed in the role as Connery did. It's like everyone else is kind of playing him, but Connery almost is him in a way. And for many people, 
it's really Connery's role and everyone else is second to him. And I, I kind of agree with that. Every actor, their uh, run is kind of based around them. And the fact that Connery was not only first, but he has such a great presence. And Connery is a young movie star. He's very handsome. He's very captivating. This is also the first film with a cue sequence where he shows all the gadgets to James Bond. This film relies more on technology and gadgets than the previous Bond films did. There were tons of Bond knockoffs and a lot of them were influenced by this film and this film's use of gadgets and technology, whereas the first two films certainly used that kind of stuff but didn't use it as heavily as Goldfinger did. And then that became throughout the entire um, franchise is another reason that Goldfinger is kind of the blueprint for other James Bond movies. This is the quintessential James Bond movie, um, especially one of the quintessential Connery films, just because, uh, not just because of what it influenced, but also because this is just a classic fun fantasy action adventure film. When you think of James Bond, you think of Goldfinger, and there's a reason for that because this is one of the better Bond films ever made. So if you would like to talk about Goldfinger, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.